Hi guys, welcome back to Geeks 40k channel and welcome to the latest video in my Road to 30k series that I've been doing. Um, in the last video you saw that I was going off to paint up two tanks, uh, Damocles Command Rhino and my Razorback. Um, so both the tanks are done, so I just want to quickly go through these with you. Um, so first off, Damocles Command Tank. Beautiful kit to put together from Forge Old. Uh, probably easier to put together than my Scorpius will in the side, the side panels just seem to fit a lot nicer. Um, so it's done, it's had its gold um, edges on it as well. Differences between this one and the Scorpius is I've golded up all of the rivets on there. Just so it stands out a little bit more and it, you, we know it's a command tank. Some subtle transfers as well, obviously the uh, Ultramarines logo on the front. So And some really nice details on the, on the scanner dish there. I have actually glued this in just to keep it safe. Um, as well, so if I, as I spin this round, you'll see all the rivets are now gold. I hate painting rivets; it is now official. Um, but it makes it just pop a little bit more than the uh, than the Scorpius. I've also put the Ultramarines logo onto the back door as well, so the guys can follow it into battle and have a little bit of pride as they're running down, running down the lines. I love these kits from Forge World. I am thinking about getting a, a, a couple more variants of them as well because I re actually really enjoy putting these together and painting these up. So that is my Damocles Command Rhino finished. But I don't want to run it as a Damocles Command Rhino. So you saw in the last video, I can pop this off. I can pop on my Ultramarines Rhino doors. So I've put the uh, transfer on the top of this one as well. I can pop that sitting in there. I now have a 30k Rhino to enable me to run my troops down the battlefield, which is always a nice option. Um, the fact that the, the top of the Damocles is not glued in gives them that uh, versatility that I'm looking for. So now that one's done, I'm going to show you my Razorback. So the Razorback tank is for 40k, uh, it doesn't exist in 30k world. So if I want to take my Ultramarines in, into a battle for 40k, I can take a Razorback, which is always nice and handy to have, a nice bit of firepower with heavy bolters laying down there. Um, forge World upgrade doors and front panels have been done and put on. I love the upgrades, it just makes them pop a little bit more. Um, I haven't felt that it's needed any transfers, I think it's pretty obvious now with these doors on that it's an Ultramarines one. Again, I've glued the um, the heavy bolters in just to make it easy to take off that front panel. But again, lovely details over the moments and the scrolls and the Ultramarines symbol. Uh, no transfer on the back doors of this one though. Again, nice big blaring Ultramarine symbol. An ultra written on the on the banner as it goes round. Um, nice kit to put together. It's the standard Gaze Workshop one, so we I think we all know what they're like to put together by now. Um, but I can't take this in 30k. So same as my Damocles command tank. I now have a Rhino. So that gives me the option now of two Rhinos for my 30k force. Damocles command tank and my Razorback can quite easily become Rhinos. But, same again, Damocles Command Tank needs to come into play. Take that off. Put that on. I have a, Damoc I have a Damocles Command Tank and a Rhino now. So, really versatile. Gives me lots of options of what to do. Um, so, what's next for my Ultramarines? I think there's only really one choice. We have a big bag of resin. So as you can tell I've been to Forge World again and I've been buying some new bits for my Ultramarines. So inside of this bag we have a Leviathan Dreadnought. Um, I love the Leviathan Dreadnought, I think it's a wonderful kit. I'm really really looking forward to putting this together. Um, I love the helm, if it will get into focus, which is probably, there we go. I love it, I think it's an absolutely gorgeous kit. A little bit of cleaning up to do inside the inside the holes and some of the recesses in there. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to this. What, what have I just pulled down? I've pulled out a leg piece. So and this is probably the first time I've actually looked at this kit, um, to be honest. Side panel where the arm fits in, um, an all important foot. So the Leviathan Dreadnought is a gorgeous kit, but, how it performs on the battlefield is really down to what weapon options you take. Now, having watched Robin's Leviathan Dreadnought in a couple of battle reports, including the one against Winter's SEO, I really like the loadout that he went with, so I've kind of done the same. So I've got a Leviathan Dreadnought Seize Drill. 
I love the fact that this used to be used for mining in the fluff and then was weaponized and put onto onto dreadnoughts and things. So I love the blades. I love the blades that spin around these guys in here. Uh, the little spiky things that would have used to crush up rocks and are now going to be used to, to crush up my enemies of the Ultramarines. Um, the next weapon for my Leviathan is the Grav Flux Bombard Arm. Because it's cheese and it's a nasty weapon that even I hate facing. I hate this thing. I hate the uh, the fact that it leaves a a blast on the board that is uh, diff uh, dangerous terrain after you've shot it. So... Yeah, Leviathan Dreadnought Grav Arm. Really looking forward to doing this. I really want to buy a four jeweled Dreadnought Drop Pod to put him in because I think dropping him in to the lines of the enemy and getting him out and grabbing them and then the turn after going into combat it's going to be quite a nice touch, especially as my Simitar Jet Bikes and Spartan are all moving up the field as, as, as the enemy are trying to deal with this Leviathan in their, in their lines. Sounds pretty cool. And if my Damocles Command Rhino is on the board and this thing deep strikes in in a drop pod, it won't scatter. Nothing scatters in 24 inches of Madamocles. So that's actually pretty cool. So I have actually messed up a little bit. Um, the Grav Flux arm is only available in 30k. So if I was to glue it on, I can't take the Leviathan in 40k. So what I need to do is I need to magnetise the Grav arm and then go and buy a 40k weapon for my Leviathan so I can switch it round and use it in both gaming formats. Um, it's too beautiful a miniature and it's quite a threat on the battlefield to leave it out of my 40k list. Um, so this is next. This is next going to be painted up. I'm hopefully, fingers crossed, going to have it so the grav arm's done and magnetised on for you guys uh, with the help of Robin. Um, cheers, Rob. Um, and then obviously the siege arm glued in. So I'm really looking forward to painting this one up. I, I really am. I love this miniature. Um, so thanks for watching guys please leave a like it really helps out the channel um, comment leave me a comment on my two tanks that I've completed the fact that I can switch them around from command tank and razorback to rhinos um, and if you haven't done so already please subscribe to the channel and we will see you on the next one